Hello everyone, welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on impedance matching. Before I start, I'd like to sincere thanks Wei Yi for letting me knowing this. Okay, so this video, in fact, I have released much, much earlier on. However, this video, okay, which is how can we actually design impedance matching using this resonant method, they don't have any good audio. And therefore, Wei Yi has informed me and I have decided to make another video to replace that particular video. So the objective of this video is going to show you an example how can we actually implement impedance matching using another method which is resonant method. In this impedance matching, there are actually two methods. The first one which is absorption method. Again, this absorption method I have discussed earlier on. So this video mainly going to concentrate on the resonant method. This will be the part 5 series discussion on impedance matching. The rest of the discussion on impedance matching, I have put the playlist under the description. So please take a look on those videos if you're keen to know more about impedance matching. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and also the subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Guys, feel free to give me comment so that I know what topics you guys are keen at or give me some suggestion or feedback so that the quality of this channel can be further improved. Once again, Sincere thanks for your strong support. Okay, let's start okay, by having a quick definition on impedance matching. Okay, in practice, most of the impedance are complex, okay, which means that impedance are not going to be straight like 50 ohm or 100 ohm. They are actually complex, which means like, for example, 50 plus J10, okay, which are complex in nature. Okay, for example, the transistor input and output impedance, they cannot be a pure real term, basically the impedance are complex, same as transmission lines and also antenna. And in order to handle this complex impedance, there are two basic approach for impedance matching. The first one will be adsorption, which I have done earlier on. The other method is the resonant method, which we are going to discuss today. Okay, in fact, this resonant method is actually much more preferred as compared to the adsorption. Okay, the reason why is actually in these sentences here. Okay, obviously, if the stray element values are greater than the calculate value, adsorption method cannot take place. Okay, remember this. If the stray element, okay, the value is much, much bigger or slightly even slightly bigger than the value that you actually calculate. Okay, so basically, the stray element cannot be adsorbed. And hence, therefore, this adsorption method cannot be applied. So therefore, you may need to consider to use this resonant method in order to apply for this kind of situation here. What is resonant method? Okay, resonant method is to resonate any stray reactance with an equal and opposite reactance at the frequency of interest. Okay, for example, now if I have a stray capacitor, okay, I need to have an inductor so that the effect will be cancelling off. The straight effect of this capacitor, I basically have another inductor. So basically, this straight capacitor can be cancelled away by the additional inductor that I have actually added onto the circuit. So basically, this is what it means by resonant method. Okay, once this is done, the matching network design proceeds as though we have two pure resistors. Okay, so basically, instead by work, let me work out an example to show it to you how we can actually use this resonant method to implement our impedance matching. Okay, so this is an example here. The example tasks us to design an impedance matching network that will block the flow of DC. When we actually mention that we will block the flow of DC, which means that we actually block low frequency. Block low frequency means that we need to have a high pass filter configured in this impedance matching here. The frequency of operation is 100 megahertz. So basically now we know that this must be high pass filter and the frequency of operation is 100 megahertz. 
from this diagram here, you can see that the stray capacitor is actually 60 picofarad. Okay, so basically the key thing is we need to remove away this stray capacitor. Like what I have mentioned early on, under this resonant method, I need to put another inductor here. So basically they will cancel away the effect. Okay, so let's take a closer look. How can we actually implement this? So this is what I meant early on. So basically I need to add another so-called inductor. So basically this inductor is to resonant with this stray capacitor and will cancel the effect. And basically once they cancel the effect, I can design my matching network as normal over here. Can you see here? So I assume that this stray inductor will cancel away this effect. So once I cancel away the effect, basically I only have 450 at, at the source and 400 as the load. Then I can implement my matching network as usual. So basically this is how we actually can approach here. So I put it another few slides here to show it to you here. So we just concentrate on doing this matching network as usual. So basically this is the matching network over here. So we temporarily just ignore about this LR and this stray capacitor. We just design the matching network as norm over here. So basically this is the outcome of the matching network. Okay, remember the question asked for a high pass filter. Okay, once it's a high pass filter, I know that the series must be a C and the shunt must be a L. If you still remember this, if not, take a look on the video under the description, the playlist, they will explain why they need to be configured in this way for high pass filter. Another thing that I want to quickly highlight is basically, I'm not sure whether you still remember, this thing look like a gun like that. Basically look like a gun. Basically this is a gun head. Basically this is the handle where we hold onto the gun. Remember the gun head is always point to the smaller guy. Can you still remember? This is 50, this is 400. So therefore I know that the series is actually pointing towards the 50 ohm. And this will be the shunt component here. I'm not sure whether you're still able to recall, but simple, you can refer to the playlist to understand this better. Okay, let's quickly continue the discussion of how we can actually design this matching network. Okay, so everything as usual, we just do as usual what we have been doing for this L element matching network. Okay, so the step number one, QP and QS, they are the same. Basically, they are under this formula, which is square root RP over RS minus one. Okay, so this is parallel, this is series. So parallel over here, you can see that this L and 400 ohm they are connected in parallel this capacitor and this source resistance they are all connected in series so therefore from here i can conclude that parallel is equals to 400 series is equal to 50 and from here i can calculate that my qpqs is equals to 2.64 next let's concentrate on the series first okay so basically this is a series if you still remember under the series, okay, so the Q of a series is actually the reactance over the resistor. If you still remember, okay, please be very careful on this, which is the reverse process of parallel. For series is basically the reactance over the resistor. Okay, so from here, I already have my Q value. I know my series resistor value. I can easily find my reactance value. So I can find my reactance value on this formula here. Okay, so let's let's quickly discuss this also. Over here, series basically will be my capacitor. So basically, I replace this reactance as capacitor. This S doesn't mean source. Basically, it's series here. So again, I told you earlier on, I can find my reactance of the capacitor, okay, which is QS times RS. QS, which I have found earlier on, which is 2.64 here. So it's 2.64 multiplied the series resistor, which is 50 ohm. So from here, I can calculate that the reactance of capacitor is equal to 132 ohms. Okay, remember, I can't stop over here because the objective is to find the exact value of capacitor. Okay, so if you still remember, this is basically the formula. Okay, so basically the reactance of capacitor is equal to 1 over omega C. Okay, omega is equal to 2 pi m, if you still remember. But the objective is to find the C value. I rearrange the formula in this way. Basically, I do a cross product, okay, which is 1 
basically these two are moving over. So basically this is how we actually can find the C value. So the radiance or the omega, which I told you earlier on, which is two pi F, the frequency is given in the question, which is 100 megahertz here. Okay, 100 megahertz here. So therefore I put the 100 megahertz and therefore I can find my capacitor value, which is 12 picofarad, which means that this will be 12 picofarad. So next, let's concentrate on the parallel. So this part here will be concentrated on the parallel. So this is basically the QP, okay, the parallel formula, which is the resistor over the reactance. One thing I highlight because the student always makes this mistake. For series, you can see that basically is reactance over resistor. But for parallel, it's reverse, it's resistor over the reactance. So be very mindful about this and don't make so-called careless mistake. If not, some mark will be deducted over here or you get the wrong concept here. Okay, so how we can actually design this. Okay, so this RP, which is parallel over here, parallel, I actually has the inductor. So therefore, this reactance become inductor. And this L stands for the load. Okay, so this is RL for the load here. So the load having a resistor value of 400 ohms. So from here, I can easily calculate the reactance value of the inductor. This RL, which is 400, QP, as I mentioned earlier on, that I calculated earlier on, which is 2.64. So from here, I can calculate my reactance of inductor is equal to 151 ohm. Okay, remember, as I have mentioned earlier on, I can't stop over here because the key intention is to find the exact L value, but not on the reactance. So next few steps, I'm actually going to find the values of the inductor. Okay, again, it's by this formula. Okay, which is the reactance of L or inductor is equal to WL. Okay, so again, I need to find my L value. So therefore, it's the reactance of the inductor over radian, which is 2 pi F. So from here, I can calculate my L value, which is equal to 240 nano Henry. Okay, so basically, this will be my L value, which is 240 nano Henry for the matching network. So from this matching network, I have calculated the C, okay, having 12 picofarad, and the L value here is 240 nano Henry. Okay, so let's take a look, okay, on the difference between adsorption and resonant. Okay, so this video, I concentrate on resonant. So take a close look how I actually implement the resonant method. Okay, next steps here, I need to get rid the stray capacitor C. Okay, if you still remember, I need to get rid the stray capacitor C. Okay, basically, I need to introduce another shunt inductor okay, at 100 megahertz in order to remove away the effect of this stray capacitor of 60 picofarad. This is the formula to calculate here. So this will be the value of the inductor, which is 1 over k radian squared divided by the stray capacitor, which is 60 picofarad. So from here, I can calculate that if my inductor is equal to 42.2 nano Henry, Okay, they will effectively remove away the effect of the stray capacitor. So this value here, I need to understand this. But next slide, okay, uh, will tell the whole story here. So this is basically what I have calculated. This is the matching network that I have calculated earlier on. So I assume that if I have this 42.2 nano Henry, this guy will actually remove away the stray capacitor effect, if you still remember. Okay, so how can I find my total L now? Basically from here, I have find my matching network L here, which is 240 nano Henry. And this is the stray so-called uh, inductor that I need to incur to remove away the stray capacitor. So this inductor, I need to have a 42.2 nano Henry. So basically my matching network, I need to combine these two. So since these two inductor that are connected in parallel, Okay, I can actually calculate that my total LT need to be in 35.88 nano Henry. Then therefore, with this, you can imagine that when I actually have this 35.88 nano Henry here, I actually can introduce a stray inductor to remove away this stray capacitor. And also, I will be able to do my matching network. So this is basically the method of resonance. Okay, I put all the thing into one solution here. OK, 
Okay, so basically, uh, this is 36. It's about 35.88. I just uh, round up the numbers to 36. So basically, with this matching network, okay, so basically, I will have a branch of inductor to cancel away the straight effect of this capacitor here. So this inductor that will be cancelling effect will be 42.2 nano Henry here. And basically with this, I have successfully designed an impedance matching network using resonant method. With this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. See you guys.